Could the Peterborough Phantom scare off Basingstoke Bison? Olympic hopefuls come to Winchester? And in football, did Eastley continue their recent good form? Hello and welcome to Sports Week, I'm Amy Pickering. We start with English Premier League ice hockey this week and Basingstoke Bison have been inconsistent with their form this season, but they were looking for back-to-back -back wins as they welcomed the Peterborough Phantoms to the Planet Ice Arena. Michael Connolly was at the game. The Basingstoke Bison faced the Peterborough Phantoms on Saturday in what proved to be a thrilling encounter. Steve Moria started off the scoring putting Basingstoke 1-0 up after 12 minutes. Basingstoke grabbed a second only three minutes later, Marcel Petran finding a way past the phantom netminder. Then with only a few minutes left in the period, Jacob Heron intercepted a pass and stayed cool to fire Basingstoke 3-0 ahead. But the phantoms came out fighting in the second period, Zidins getting a goal back less than 30 seconds after the restart. Zidins then added a second only a minute later and the Phantoms completed their comeback with only a couple of minutes left on the clock, Jeff Glower making it 3-3 and sending the game into overtime. Despite both teams continuing to create chances in a dramatic five minutes of overtime, Miller scored the game-winning goal in a fast-paced move that even the cameraman missed it, winning the match 4-3 for the Basingstoke Bison. Michael Connolly, Winchester News Online. Over to rugby and Winchester University men's team have had a great start to their season with three wins from four games. But now the women's season is kicking off as well. Henry Lewin and Tick went to training to see how they are preparing. Winchester University women's rugby team have been working hard this season to prepare for their first league match against Newport. I feel quite confident. Training has been good over the past six weeks. Last night we focused on things from, things from breakdown, did some line outs, did some scrummage stuff. We've been doing just kind of practice drills. Last year they didn't have much league success, but with some new arrivals and more experienced players, they're hoping this season will be better. We've got people in different positions, which should try and mix it up a bit. Hopefully it'll be an improvement. Rugby is a contact sport, and with many new players playing their first match, inexperience could be a problem. I know girls who aren't as confident may not go into it, but when you don't go into it, when you hesitate is when things can go wrong. So you just go for it. The match will take place here at Winchester Rugby Football Club on Wednesday the 9th of November. Henry Lewin Tit for Winchester News Online. Next we have the Olympics and with London 2012 less than a year away, many athletes are working on boosting the popularity of their sport. This week members of the Team GB fencing team were in Winchester. Mikey Smith tells us more. Two members of the Great Britain fencing team were in Winchester this week to teach Winchester students all about their sport. Olympic hopefuls Tom Bennis and Katie Dolan tuled and gave tips before allowing the sports study students to have a go themselves. Performance consultant and former Winchester student Jonathan Rhodes also gave a talk and he seemed unsure of Great Britain's chances of ending their fencing medal drought which stretches back 48 years. Hopefully we have a couple of Olympic hopefuls. Um, it's, it's a complete um, lottery really when it comes to, uh, when it comes to fencing. It's, it depends on the, on the pools depends on the seedings as well, so um, it's not very predictable, but hopefully we, we can produce uh, at least one, at least one uh, medal at the 2012 Olympics. Mikey Smith for Winchester News Online. And staying with the Olympic Games, Winchester has been chosen as one of the destinations on the Olympic torch route for next year. The city will be part of the journey, which will see the torch travel by bicycle, tram, train and boat over the 1,018 locations across the UK. The relay will last 70 days, covering almost 8,000 miles, and the torch will make its appearance in Winchester on the 11th of July 2012. 
to football and AFC Tottenham are eagerly anticipating their match against Bradford Park Avenue in the FA Cup first round proper this coming Saturday. But first, Sam Ashton sees if they could contend with Team Solent in the Russell Coates Cup, with the winner finding themselves in their next round away to Winchester City. Totten grabbed an early lead thanks to this Mark Osman strike after Mike Gosney's original shot came off the post. And things soon got worse for Team Solent, reduced to 10 men for this rash challenge with Osman through on goal. Totten looked like running away with the game when Michael Charles let rip from an angle. And it was 3-0 before the break as Gosney broke free of the Solent defence to continue his impressive goal scoring streak. This kind of form from Gosney is what had league clubs Brighton and Millwall interested in his services this summer. Charles got his second after half time, but there was still time for the away side to snatch a consolation goal. This win means Totten face an away trip to Winchester in the next round of the Russell Coates Cup. But manager Stuart Ritchie spoke about his side's prospects for the FA Cup this weekend. But a very difficult game. We've uh, had them watch, so uh, we know what to expect. Um, they're flying in their league, so yeah, it's going to be very difficult. But you know, we're uh, at home, good so win today. Um, to what support. extent do you think today was they just they a should, warm up for, uh, for yeah, Saturday? Was, yeah, we left. Well, there's ten, ten first team players wanting to roll today, so um, yeah, it's a good chance to give one or two players haven't played a game. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a good, good test, and uh, we can we come through well. And finally, this week to the Blue Square South. An Eastley season has been turned on its head as of late with a run of good form and at the weekend they hosted Maidenhead United. Maidenhead went into the game without a win in their last six games and the expectation was on Eastley to bring home the three points. Del Gunnell was at the Silver Lake. Eastley hosted Maidenhead at the weekend and with the Spitfires looking to put an end to their poor run of form, they started the brighter. Leon Solomon calling goalkeeper Sam Besant into action early on here to prevent the ball being diverted into his own net. It wasn't long before Eastley went ahead. Jamie Slabber cleverly turning in the box and passing the ball into the corner. Slabber scored twice in the previous outing against Thurrock and it seemed as if he was well up for more goals here. Ian Herring has been one of Eastley's standout players despite the Spitfire's poor run of form. And Herring turned provider here with a pinpoint cross onto the foot of Graham Montgomery who fired home at the far post. Maidenhead were quick to reply though with a neat passing move exploiting the Eastley defensive frailties. Anthony Thomas would have been disappointed to have not done better here. Maidenhead were again on the back foot, this time Chris Flood seeing his head a crash off the post only to see Slabber grabbing his second of the game and Eastley's third. After the break Maidenhead pressed for a way back with Thomas stinging the fingertips of Eastley stopper Jack Dovey. And it wasn't long before they got their reward with a thunderous effort from fullback Daniel Brown leaving Dovey with no chance at all. Straight after, Dovey was again called into action, acrobatically saving from this effort from Ashton Holgate. With Maidenhead pressing for a way back, holes were left in the defence, which Jordan's holder Spooner exploited, crossing here for Montgomery who saw his header crash off the bar. With the game looking won, Maidenhead's woes were added to when lonely Chris Flood stole away to fire home on his debut to thwart any efforts for a grandstand finish. The game ended 4-1, moving the Spitfires up to 14th in the league. Dale Gornall, Winchester News Online. Well, that's all from us here at Win All Sports Week, but please remember, for more award-winning news and sport, do log on to www.winall.co.uk. But for now, thank you, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.